Hey everybody, I thought today I'd do a little video on uh, one of the systems I had picked up a while ago and got working. Uh, got this off eBay. It's a Fairchild Channel F System 2, which is the second version of the U.S. Uh, model of the Fairchild. Uh, the original Fairchild, the uh, case looked a little bit different. Uh, the controllers were hardwired, but in this version they're actually not. They use a standard um, uh, DB9 connector here. Um, also, on this version, uh, the sound goes through the RF cable to the TV. On the original version of the Fairchild, um, the sound was internal. Now, the, uh, it's kind of amazing. I mean, the Fairchild, I mean, some people know about it, some people don't. But basically, it was really the first microprocessor uh, version of a video game that used uh, interchangeable cartridges. Uh, you know, there was the Magnavox Odyssey, uh, which obviously came out first in 72, but they weren't really cartridges. It was just different game logic uh, when you put the cards in. But uh, the Fairchild was actually the pioneer that really did these cartridges, and they're kind of built like tanks. I mean, I always thought the Atari 2600 cartridges were built really tough, but the, uh, the Fairchild ones even built even stronger. Uh, they're really solid. The system's pretty solid, too. Um, it's very basic in size, not a lot into it. But what's really innovative and, and quite amazing is uh, when Atari came out with the you know their joystick in you know 1976 when they came out with the 2600. I mean you had the one fire button and the eight directions, and you know everyone seemed to like it, and it's a good controller. But what amazes me is that the Channel F came out before the 2600, and this is the controller. Now it does look a little different. Uh, it has a little arrow uh, on the top indicating where it's holding it forward, and you do hold it like this. There's no trigger on it per se. But what's really amazing about it is, it's an eight direction joystick. So you can still move in all the same directions as a regular joystick. But also, now this is not uh, analog, it's all digital. But you can actually pivot right and left. And this is actually two functions, it's digital. So you have a regular joystick, and then you can still twist it and pivot it. And in addition to that, you can press down for your firing, which, you know, for action games, you know, uh, it's a pain. But most of the games on this really didn't do too, too much with uh, fast action. So you have your regular joystick, eight directions. You can pivot for two more directions. You can go down, but you also can go up. So this has eight directional, then nine, ten for twisting, down eleven, up is twelve. Twelve different options with just this joystick. And I think that's quite amazing. Now, uh, kind of like the 5200 had a lot of problems with their joysticks. This is actually built like it really well inside, except for the wire. Uh, this cable here is very, very thin inside, and they break real easy. As a matter of fact, one of these controllers does have a, a break in it somewhere. And I haven't replaced it yet, only because um, I kind of like how uh, it has the Fairchild F on this connector, and I hate to ruin the cable right now. So, unless I can find out exactly where the break is, uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, but again, it's just amazing that this machine, first cartridge unit, had a joystick with so many functions on it. Now, they actually sold this for the 2600 years later uh, that actually put a trigger on it, and it was just a regular joystick. It, they got rid of the rotation, and they got rid of the up and down, but it did have a trigger, and it was a, it was an okay joystick. And again, this feels good in the hand, kind of like the Bally Astrocade, kind of, um, but of course, this came much sooner. Now, the reasons I was firing up my Channel F was uh, I do have regular cartridges, but I got this bad boy here, which is their multi-cart. So every game program for the Fairchild is on this cartridge, and as well as demos. But I wanted to show you on here, there was a version of the Pac-Man for the Channel F that was not only really good, even had the cutscenes in it, which I thought was amazing. Um, and again, this is a system that predates the 2600. And, uh, you know, there's, there's homebrews of Pac-Man for the 2600 that are wild. Like, AK Pac-Man's phenomenal. But for a Channel F, a much earlier, much more simpler system, uh, with a version of Pac-Man that was superior than the Atari released Pac-Man... That's just pretty amazing. Now, of course, the Pac-Man on here is a homebrew. It was never released uh, when the Channel F had come out, but it's still really neat to see. Now, in, in my version of the Channel F, it kind of slides in here and it locks in place like so. And there's supposed to be a plastic button here that you press to reset. I'll have to make one because this one's missing. And you would press that to eject it. So I'll put this in here and you have your power switch right here. Okay, and the Channel F's only got like four colors. It's not going to be anything phenomenal. Um, it's no uh, Xbox 360, but this cartridge, you can see, it's got a lot of different games on it. We're going to scroll through them real quick until we get the good old Pac-Man. 
but again, these are all on this one cartridge, which is just great. Um, cause I don't have all the individual game cartridges. I have a few, but there's even demos on here, trade show, um, things that they have, they put out and it just get, ended up on the cart. But we want to find good old Pac-Man. You even got Tetris. Look at that. But there we go. So we're going to push down on the controller to select it. Now, it's going to be really hard playing this game uh, one-handed regardless, uh, holding my, uh, my, my cell phone here, which I'm using to record the video. One day I'll get an actual camera uh, with a tripod and I'll do better videos. But for right now, let's just get started. Now let's try and go down. There we go. So again, this is a very good version of Pac-Man, even with sound. Um, and I don't know if I'll actually make one of the cutscenes because it's really hard to play with one hand. Uh, but we'll try. Down over here. Get get that cherry. So what I'll do for you fellas, I'm gonna pause the game a little bit or the camera and I'll get to one of the cutscenes and I'll keep recording in a second. Okay, let's see if we get that cutscene. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this has all the levels in it and all the cutscenes. So again, not bad for a computer system that was predating the Atari 2600. Uh, it was extremely limited hardware-wise, but they still were able to do some pretty cool things on it. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll bring more videos soon, and hopefully have a better camera uh, next time around to uh, do this a little bit better. But again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please like, share, subscribe, and don't get eaten by ghosts. Game on, everybody.